Hello and welcome to Free Radical Damage. My name is David Woodruff. I am the editor of Critical Care Nursing, made incredibly easy. I hope to make this incredibly easy for you too. Let's talk a little bit about free radicals. What causes free radicals to be produced in the body? It's a number of different things, usually cells that have decreased perfusion, such as what happens with a myocardial infarction, a stroke, or sepsis, or anyone having any form of shock. Free radicals are produced. This is the result of the inflammatory process, and they're produced by our white blood cells. These free radicals cause damage to the cellular components. In fact, some of our antibiotics cause bacteria to create free radicals, which there in turn kills the bacteria. So a very interesting way of being able to attack bacteria by using free radicals as part of the process of killing off the bacteria. So this is what's going on in the cell that ends up causing damage from these free radicals. We have ischemia, which is causing decrease in ATP production. That decrease in ATP production is going to cause three major things to happen. A decrease in the sodium-potassium pump. Okay, so we're not running that sodium-potassium pump. We're getting an increase in glycolysis, so we're breaking down glucose. And then we are having a decrease in our calcium pump. And we know how important calcium is to many of the tissues of the body, especially those muscle tissues. So the three results that end up as a result of these three things that are being damaged with decreased ATP production from ischemia will be cellular swelling as a result of that decrease in the sodium-potassium pump. Glycolysis will cause a decrease in pH, acidosis. Then that decrease in the calcium pump will cause mitochondrial damage. And that mitochondria is the energy source for the cell. So that's going to end up causing not enough energy to be produced in the cell to be able to keep the cell alive. So what we'll end up with is we'll end up with cells that are starting to die. So now we have a cell that is going through this process of ischemia, injury, and necrosis. Remember, you've been hearing about that before, ischemia, injury, necrosis. That's the way the cell is going to die. Now, if we add oxygen during that process, what can happen is we can get a reperfusion injury. You may have heard this term before in reference to what happens with somebody who has a heart attack when we start reperfusing the heart, having a reperfusion arrhythmia, for example, or a reperfusion injury. So let's take a look at what's going on there with oxygen to cause this reperfusion injury. Here's our cell, and here's the free radicals that are being produced. We're going to take a look at that free radical in just a moment. But the healthy cell is on the left side. Then here's that healthy cell being attacked by those free radicals. Remember, again, they're designed to kill off bacteria, but they're not specific. They just can't pick out the bacteria. Usually our white blood cells do that for us. They say, hey, free radicals go in here and kill this bacteria. However, if they're just circulating, they're going to start attacking even good cells. And then we get this oxidative stress, which leads to cell destruction. So here is that process again. We have the anoxia that is being caused, in this case, by a thrombus, and the cell is going to start to go through those changes of ischemia, injury, and necrosis. Remember, we had those three things going on. The decrease in the sodium-potassium pump, that's causing the swelling of the cell. We're having the decrease in the calcium pump, causing damage to the mitochondrial, which is meaning we're decreasing the energy the cell has to work with. And then we're having acidosis, which is going to cause further damages to the cell. Now we add oxygen to this mix and we start to produce these oxygen free radicals. Now here we go with the definition of an oxygen free radical. An oxygen free radical is an oxygen compound that has an unstable amount of electrons. So you can see some of them that are listed there at the bottom. It's a superoxide or peroxide. Those things are radicals that are going to cause damage to the cell. So these are reactive oxygen species. That's another term for this. It has an unpaired electron, and that unpaired electron is going to cause a lot of damage when we don't have it paired up in the right way. It's just oxygen. I mean, oxygen isn't going to cause damage in and of itself, right? But that unpaired electron is what's causing all of the problems and the damage in the body. 
So here is our oxygen atom over there at the left, and you see it's a healthy looking little thing over there. Now we take away one of those electrons and it turns into a free radical. So now we have this water molecule here, or this oxygen molecule, and it doesn't have enough electrons on it. Well, it can pick up an electron from an antioxidant. So an antioxidant like vitamin C, and there's a number of different ones, vitamin E, etc. Those things are antioxidants, and they add, they have extra uh, electrons that they can add to these free radicals, and then it makes the free radical stable, and it goes back into that little green smiley face over on the left. So we've got these three things, these things that are happening in the body, these atoms that are floating around, losing electrons, becoming free radicals, usually when they're signaled to do so by the white blood cell when it encounters bacterium. However, this can also happen with any kind of inflammatory response. When a patient has an MI, patient has a stroke, patient has sepsis, we're getting an out of control inflammatory response in the body. White blood cells are converting oxygen to free radicals because it thinks that it's fighting bacteria and we end up with having this oxidative stress or this oxidative damage. So we add some antioxidants, they give up some electrons to the free radicals, and that helps the patient to be able to do better. We get less secondary tissue damage. We don't know exactly how to use these yet, but antioxidants have been found to decrease aging and all sorts of other long-term tissue damage that occurs. Well, thank you for joining me for Free Radical Damage. My name is David Woodruff. Until next time, bye now.